Hello and welcome. This is Kojo Sound Why Next Trash. I'm Bjorn Jacobson and this is the Unity series part three. And this is about uh, parameter control within um, sound, sound sources and audio sources. Um, I have continued a little from the previous two episodes and this one will be much faster paced than the previous two because there was, those were pretty covering in general. Um, as you can see here, I have removed the mesh from the collider, so you can now just walk into it. There won't be any effects on it. The sound source, which we have here, has, has all these parameters that you can change. Uh, if we walk around, we can change the volume here. So let's try and make it play on awake and just have it loop. It'll play once we get started. We can alter the volume here and you'll see. So in that way you can change the volume, but once your game is rendered and you're playing the game, you can't obviously click this inspector window and change the volume on the fly. So we need some way to control that. Um, in our cube, we still have our audio collider script here, which we're going to take a look at. In here, if you make two dashes like this, it will become a comment. So now, these lines will not happen once you enter and exit the collider. Um, up here, we'll make something called a public public float, if I could spell public float, and we'll call it um, collider volume. Now, when something is public, it is an open value that can be altered from anywhere. Um, and when something becomes public, let's try and save it here. Um, over here, that means that, that it becomes visible in here. Volider, I can't even spell today. And so this is the value that we're, that we're at. So let's say here, we want, when the game starts, we want, let's make sure that it's spelled correctly. We want our collider volume to be equal one. That means that our collider volume is now set to one. So when we start this game, this, the, the, this value will become one. Now, the sound will play on awake and you'll be able to hear the sound and the volume will be one. Now, if we enter the collider here, we could say that our collider sound, this is the sound source, dot volume becomes collider volume, like this. Um, oh, there we go. So collider sound, which is the sound source that we have, will become, the value of volume will become the collider volume that we have set here. So, and that one is set to one. So if we alter this and then set it to one as it will be from the start, we can here on our cube say we want it to be, once we enter the collider, we want it to become 0 0.5. So now when we press play and enter the collider, the volume should be half. Ah, that's a mistake because we have set it in here to become one. So if we remove this, press play, stay at 0.5 that's because we forced it in this in the um, in the init part of this the initialization part to become one and that shouldn't happen so now let's see if we can say down here when we trigger it we can say collider sound dot volume equals one. So now it will become one again once we leave 
the collider. There you go. That's how you do collider volumes and have volume, or you can also do it with pitch. So we can say, once you enter this one here, we can say collider sound. Lighter sound dot pitch equals a lot of volume. So now when we press play, the pitch should also become 0 0.5. So it should go down to not only half, half volume, it should also go into half the pitch. reason why it doesn't go back is simply because we have not told it down here to go back once we exit the collider. So if we do that now, it should. That's how you do very simple parameter control.